implement a queue using stacks. So we want to design a custom queue called my queue. That's the name of the class. And we only want we want to use only two stacks. That's it. Just two. Two stacks. Implement the push, pop, peak, and empty methods. So these are the methods they want us to implement. And then the push pushes all element pushes elements at the end of the queue. So a queue is a first in, first out. So when something is added, it, you join the back of the queue. You don't join the front, otherwise you're gonna have a fight. And so when you pop, in pop removes or returns the element from the front. So that's when first first come, first serve, first in, first out. Peak returns the element at the front of the queue as well. Uh, an empty, empty returns a boolean. That is true if the queue is empty, otherwise it's false. Now we're required to only use the standard stack operations, which means that only push peak for stacks, pop from the top size and is empty. That's all, that's all we're allowed to, be, to use. Oh, okay, and in some interview questions, uh, it's called NQ, ONQ and DQ, right, respectively. And so, yeah, we want to implement a queue. And I don't think this example is super clear. I think the solution diagram is way better from these guys. And now, I, I, I think it's like super interesting, really. So we need two stacks, right? Like they said, the question said we're going to use only two stacks. And so what you need to realize is we're going to call stack one. We'll have half stack one and half stack two. And stack one is going to be the thing that holds the data. Stack two is going to be like a temporary uh, thing that helps us. All it helps us do is push things, really. And this diagram is going to help us. I mean, there's all this text, but I like the, just looking through the diagram and looking through the code. So imagine we have this queue, right? This is on the front, one, two, and then three. We want to bring three into the queue. Now, if in the beginning, right we have this stack that represents that queue so when you take something from the top it's gonna take what's in front of the queue right one and and two but now when we want to bring in three how are we going to do it first of all we're going to have to transfer everything here first so you can see it goes in this way then put three in into the stack into stack one then when we're done bring everything back so that's the trick and now we have a queue and it maintains the queue order because this is at the bottom of the queue, like the back of the queue, and this is on top in the front of the queue, just like before. And so all that looks like in code is uh, fairly straightforward. So we have this queue, our class, we have the constructor where we store uh, stack one and stack two. This stack one holds the real elements, right? Stack two is just a, temp a placeholder for uh, maintaining the queue order. And now when we push something in, while stack one is, isn't empty, while there's something in there, we're gonna take everything out, out out from stack one and put it into stack two that's what's happening over here and then we're going to put that new thing back into stack one just like before and then move everything back from stack two to stack one so it's the same pattern okay and that's pretty much it every other thing is fairly straightforward right pop from the queue is going to just take take the first thing off the top of the the of our uh stack and it's going to correspond to what's in front of the queue same will peak same with empty and that's it that's pretty much it it's an easy problem according to LeetCode, and you can see why so i can just step through this diagram again uh we have this stack we pre-populated it but this it was populated the same way really um we're transferring elements to stack two right so that's what this does this does all that transfer the transferring then we're putting three in there that's this line right here and then we're putting everything back and that's this line right here. That's all. Then everything else is the same, fairly standard stack operation. Uh, time complexity wise, uh, we're gonna say O of N for push. We're gonna go method by method. So o, o of N, as, which is kind of intuitive, right? It goes linearly with the number of items in the queue. Same pop, I mean, it's uh, O of one because the top of the stack points to the front of the queue. So it's constant time operation. Empty is the same thing. You're just checking the length. It's the same thing. Peak is the same thing because uh, the front is returned. So they all have O of 1 and runtime. Only push has an O of N runtime. 
and our space complexity push is going to have O of n because we're storing n items in across both stacks. Um, and then pop, pop is going to be constant time, constant space, my bad, constant space complexity because we don't create or store anything with it that grows as the size of the stack grows. And that's all there is to this problem. Thank you for watching. Uh, see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, upload, share. Thank you so much. Cheers.